Hey, what's going on guys? I'm coming to you today with an X-Wing build. Uh, we're going to do some Wave 12, 13 stuff. Uh, we're going to do some bomber stuff in this build and I'm using yet another squad builder. I will put a link to this build down in the description below. Uh, I also want to point out that I am going to be announcing the winner at the end of this video of the uh, holiday giveaway. So stay tuned for that as well. Um, so let's go ahead and jump right in. Uh, I'm going to um, be doing a rebel build today using the new resistance bomber. Um, only going to be using one of them because I think it's kind of obvious they seem to work really well as a group, but I wanted to try some different stuff. So I'm going to be using Crimson Specialist, who's maybe not the best bomber, but I'm trying to find ways to make him better. One of the things with Crimson Specialist um, is that he's got a low pilot skill, but he makes up for it by being having a lot of versatility on where those bombs are going to detonate. So we're going to put a proton bomb on him, and we're also going to give him ordnance silos. So now he's got lots of proton bombs. So that's pretty cool. You got four proton bombs on this guy. He's also going to maximize. We're going to maximize this um, low pilot, or, you know, low uh, two attack by giving him accuracy corrector. Accuracy corrector is something I haven't really used a whole lot of because most of the systems that can take it don't really get that much of a benefit from it. Well, here I think is like in the in the resistance bomber. I think we get one of the best ships that's like four for using the accuracy corrector because they have only got an attack of two. And they have a primary weapon turret, so they're oh, I'm pretty much always going to be able to shoot. So even at range three, you know, you've, you've got you got two hits every time at least. And if you're at range one, then you can potentially get more than that, but it gives you some insurance against bad rolls, and it allows you to do um, it allows you to save your focus for defense. Although you only have one uh, one you know one agility, so for the uh, I'm going to go ahead and go with sensor cluster here. So this way, when you do have a focus, you're, it's going to maximize your focus for defense as well, because even if you roll a blank. Um, you can spend that focus and turn it into an evade. That's kind of the uh, the thing. We're trying to maximize everything that he can do. Uh, and we're going to give him deflective plating as well, since he could be potentially dropping bombs really, really close to himself. Uh, we're going to give him defective, deflective plating. So, you know, this is cheap. And wherever it works really well. Now, um, to try to maximize these proton bombs a little bit, I'm going to... Also, go ahead and go with like the bombing champion of the universe, and that's going to be Captain Nim, the rebel version. Captain Nim can prevent friendly bombs from detonating, so if we've got that proton bomb and they just dodged it, we can go ahead and use Captain Nim for that. Uh, we are going to make, and this is going to be a little different because Nim kind of got nerfed in the last FAQ, um, but. It's okay because Nim's still good. I don't think you know. I don't think it was a nerf to make Vim, Nim bad. It just made Nim less less of a must pick. I think uh, we are going to go with the Havoc, um, and uh, and I'm going to put Genius on here, even though Genius isn't really as good. Uh, it's still a nice option and it's free. So you know, but the real reason we're using the Havoc here is to get the trajectory sim um, uh, simulator. So the cool thing about the trajectory simulator is. Um, I mean, normally people run advanced sensors on NIM, you know, and, and engine upgrade and all that. I get that. I've got another answer for that. But trajectory simulator would be fun with NIM, especially with uh, the the bomblet generator. Whoops! Well, so let's find bomblet. Let's find bomblet. All right. So now NIM can just keep launching bombs like no problem, like it's nobody's business. And NIM's going to be at PS10. So um, if we're going to be launching bombs, especially in the early turns of the game, we now have you know like oh you're you're at range three. Okay, well we'll launch a bomb. You know, no problem. Um, good stuff there. And I think that's all we're going to put on Nim right now. Uh, so the next thing we're going to look is we're going to go with the uh, a shuttle. We're going to go with the sheath of peace. So another wave, uh, you know, another new stuff. We're going to go with um, we're going to go with Fen Rao. So Fen, this gives us another uh, another high pilot skill character. Um, we're going to go ahead and give him adaptability to bring him right up to ten uh, because I want options here with Nim. Uh, if if he's going to, for example, um, coordinate, I want him to be able to have the option to do it before Nim goes or after Nim goes. Uh, and, and so having him at a PS10 really gives me a lot of flexibility there. Uh, and it makes up for not having advanced sensors. Um, because I can have, if, if I need him to potentially barrel roll first and then move, well I, then I just activate Fen Rao first. He goes ahead and gives Nim that free action. Nim barrel rolls, drops bomb, and goes when it's his turn. Um, so Fenrau's got that, um, you know, you know, great use of, of that. Fenrau um, 
is also a good support character, uh, you know, to stop stop other people from using their dice. Um, so so that's that much is going to be very very helpful. Well, Fenrir is also going to get a couple of other things. So it, part of the other reason I chose the Sheathapede is that we can put um, Sabine on here, and Sabine will be very very fun. And, and and I was tempted. I could have just put Sabine on the Skurg if I didn't use the Havoc. But I really wanted to try Trajectory Simulator, so that's, you know, I can see there being different options there. Um, so Sabine is going to go on here, which also gives us the bomb slot. Um, now for Astromech, you have a lot of options, and I can see, like, Chopper being a really good option, especially if you put the title on of Phantom on there, and then, you know, you don't have to, you know, just have Chopper eat stuff. But I went ahead and went with the R2 Astromech. I wanted to get those green maneuvers, so I'm going to gain four extra green maneuvers, and since Fen's ability... Um, counts on him not having stress. I figured R2 Astromech was going to be a good, uh, you know, uh, he'd, he'd get a lot of payoff from that. It's something that's automatic. Um, we're going to make all of those one and twos green. So, you know, definitely some payoff there. And we are at 98 points. So uh, we'll, we can just go with, you know, seismic charges here. We could go with ion bombs as well, but I'm going with the seismics. Uh, you know, just trying to get all that, that bomb damage out there. So we have, you know, we got three ships. We got two real high pilot skills. We got Fenrau, who can be uh, an 8 or a 10, but he'll probably be a 10. Uh, we've got Nim at a 10, and I've got options on who I want to go first. Uh, and then I've got the I've got the Crimson Specialist over here with a deflective plating. So, you know, and the thing is, Crimson Specialist doesn't even need Nim to use his ability on him because he can always just ignore the bomb with deflective plating uh, if he needs to, and that's at least a one-time guaranteed and potentially, you know... I think average, you probably get about two uses out of it. But um, beyond that, it's unlikely you'll get three or more. But it's still always that chance. But it's it's very really, it's really there in case Nim can't stop the bomb from going off. Um, then then we can, or you just it's you know we've got to. So so that's the build. Um, didn't have enough points to do crossfire formation, and it wouldn't have worked anyway because I don't have other resistance ships. Another thing about this build is that um, it's spanning like all three timelines, right? You've got you know. Uh, at top with the Crimson, you've got the future timeline, you know, you've got the sequel trilogy, you've got the Galactic Civil War, and then a Sheathapede, which is from Clone Wars era, so you're kind of covering all three of your timelines, which I think is kind of cool uh, in a build like this also. So when I said thematic, I this is kind of what I was alluding to in that it's just it's kind of covering all, all of the bases. So that is the build. I'm going to put a link to this in the description below. I also want to go ahead and announce the winner, uh, and that is going to be Jeremy Ortiz. Uh, so go ahead and contact me on the back end of my channel so I can get your contact details, and you just want a $20 Cool Stuff gift card, so uh, awesome. So I just want to thank you, everybody, for watching. If you, uh, if you haven't already, uh, make sure you're subscribed. Click the little bell for alerts. The next giveaway is going to be announced uh, very, very soon, so make sure you stay tuned for that. Um, might be doing some kind of cross-promotional thing um, with social media as well. So uh, you know, just I'm gonna I'm trying to come up with you know to make each of the giveaways slightly different in different ways. Um, but definitely stay tuned. I will be announcing that probably before Christmas. So. Uh, also, the if you haven't already, um, yeah, make sure make sure you subscribe. Uh, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and let me know uh, what you would do differently in a build like this. Or if you like the build, let me know that too as well. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching and have a great day.